your organization runs training courses for your staff and customers. Only problem is, it's time-consuming, inconvenient, and costly. Take a leaf out of our book. The School of Hard Knock Knocks uses the online training platform by YZ, and our team and customers love it. It's simple to use, supports every media format, audio, video, text, and looks great on desktops, tablets, and mobiles. And for a limited time, quote SHKK when you arrange a demo and get 10% off your first year's plan. YZ helps us deliver comedy courses around the world. Imagine what it could do for your organization. YZ, that's WYZED.com. YZ, online learning made simple. You're listening to the School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast with me, Maury Morgan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian. <laughs> Some drink on an empty head, you know that, don't you? Um, that is the shittiest knuckle I've ever heard in my life. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having no. listened to it. That's a bucket list. <laughs> You have dangerously underprepared yourself for the shit that is about to get real. If there's a single takeaway message from this interview, then it's about embracing change. British-born comedian Jeff Green was at the top of his game in the UK, performing as an equal with comedy greats, featuring on TV and radio, and even living next door to Ricky Gervais. His career, fame, comedy connections, and bank balance were bigger than a London double-decker. And then things changed. In this podcast, you'll learn how Jeff rolled with the punches, rebuilt his comedy career from scratch half a world away in Australia, and by his admission, become a better comedian. Do what you've always done and you'll get what you've always got is Jeff Green's mantra. And if you're looking for inspiration as a new comedian or in life in general, then I'm sure you'll thoroughly enjoy this interview. And if you'd like to meet Jeff and get personally coached in stand-up comedy, he's our guest comedian for our November 25 to 29 stand-up comedy course in Melbourne. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, so don't miss out. And now, he's the Chester-born, London-trained, and now Melbourne's own, Jeff Green. Hello, everyone. Nice to be in Melbourne. You could do with a few more cafes, though, don't you think? What is it, one each you've got now? You just trashed your kitchens and went, fuck it, I'm not washing up ever again. I live with a Melbourne girl. No, now that's very nice. Melbourne girls are very nice. Yes, we live together. Not without difficulties when you live with someone, is it? You know, for a bloke not being able to find anything in the house ever again, obviously. You know, put a sandwich down. It's got its own box in the attic five minutes later. <laughs> All my conversations now start with, where's my, have you seen, and what the fuck happened to? <laughs> As in, where's my shoes, have you seen my wallet, and what the fuck happened to me will to live? And then there's the cushions, thousands of cushions come into the house. What is it with women and cushions? The bedroom turns into a boudoir. If my girlfriend gets in first, all the cushions go on my side. She's going, are you in yet? I go, no, someone's been dry stone walling on my side. I've got 20 foot of cushion to go before I reach blanket. And it's not easy for women to live with men, is it, girls? Not easy. No. Living with someone who expects extra credit for any tiny act of thoughtfulness. <laughs> you may well have been cleaning the house from top to bottom, but who bought you a Kit Kat last February? <laughs> you know? Or sharing the loo with someone goes to the toilet in the middle of the night and basically pees by sound. <laughs> Listening for water on water. <laughs> Not water on tile. <laughs> then you find the lid was down. Bloody fame, Shuey. I'm gonna have to go and dry myself off on the doona now. It's a joke. It's a joke. We wouldn't do that. Not if there's a cushion handy anyway. Jeff Green, thank you very much for your time today. Hello, Maury. Uh, well, we know each other anyway because I've done some, um, some mentoring for some of your School of Hard Knock Knock um, participants and I've done yes. a couple of your gigs and I've got some more coming up. Yes, that's it, that's mm. it. And I live 800 metres from this room that we are recording in, so yeah. it couldn't be more serendipitous. Yeah, yeah. We're in the, uh, the boardroom of Mushroom uh, Music, the nerve centre where Michael Godinsky signs Ed Sheeran and Jim yep. Jeffries for huge tours. Fantastic. And, um, and we are sat amongst a wonderful... Uh, posters of all of his uh, touring successes. It is it is a grand room to be in. Well, let's talk about 
you, Jeff. Mm-hmm. So, Jeff, I, I saw you uh, as an audience member, uh, knowing the name Jeff Green, but never, and, and possibly a couple of YouTube videos. And my wife and I went to see you in, it was 90, it was 97, it was 2017. Uh, and you, it was at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival. Hilarious. There you were in the glow, uh, almost godly with the, the, the spotlight on you. And then I, um, I went up to introduce myself afterwards and accidentally bumped into you uh, near the sound soundboard, I think. Mm. We, had a, we had a great chat and that was the beginning. Yeah, you don't remember. That's fine. I'm a nobody. So <laughs> that's how we began our relationship. And then you thought that wacko's gone. I bumped into you again at the local primary school because we live in the same neighbourhood as well. Mm-hmm. So, sorry about that. Right? It's, uh, well, we live in the village of Melbourne. Yes. Uh, and Which is great. Well, it's what I love about it. You know, you get to um, hang out uh, and, 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 and connect with people who, um, who I normally wouldn't do. If I lived in London, you're very yeah. isolated in London, right. which I was there for 30 years. You know, you do your gigs, you go home, you're in your car... Um, you know, and 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 it can and it can be a very lonely experience, yeah. and I don't mind that. I I like being on my own. You have to like being on your own as a comedian, yeah. otherwise you'll get found out. But I also am quite enjoying the fact that I bump into people. Yeah. Although I'll be honest with you, it's quite alien to me, and I don't yeah. normally. I'm not. A, I'm not a naturally um, warm and effusive person. Yeah. I, I don't have m- many friends because well, I've got lots of comedy friends, yeah. Yeah. but that's they're the people I'm. I'm comfortable around. Yeah. I find small talk quite difficult, actually. Sure. I imagine. I imagine. I mean, you, you make money out of talking. So mm. um, I don't, if I'm a plumber, I don't want to go home and start working on my you know, kitchen sink. Yeah, imagine it's... Yeah, but that, but I'm I'm quite I'm quite different because um, to a lot of comedians, a lot of comedians love chatting. They love holding court. Mm. You know, like um, Jim Jeffries, we just mentioned, he will love having a yarn. Yeah. You know, um, uh, David Johns, uh, there's a few UK comics, Bill mm. Bailey. Mm-hmm. They love talking. Yeah. I'm very I'm actually uh, enjoy listening. Okay. And I um it's weird because I, my career could have gone either way. I could have been an interviewer or an interviewee. Mm-hmm. As it's turned out, I've been interviewed more than I've done any interviewing. Yeah. But I'm actually a better interviewer than I am as a subject in my opinion. Yeah. But it just never fell that way. There you go. Well, Ooh. It's like golf. It's something you can do at any time of your life, isn't it? Be an interviewer. <laughs> it's not like I suppose so, you know, yeah. you're pr- you haven't missed your prime. I'm sure we could see you on, on the... Well, you've kind of covered over a couple of first of my questions. So you, you did say you lived in London. I know that you grew up in Chester, mm-hmm. which I just want to throw this out there. Chester is the Chadston of, uh, of the UK. What I mean by that is it's as famous uh, for its shopping centre as it is for its, the town itself. Uh, not a massive, <laughs> enormous... Where did you get that from? <laughs> it's the oldest shopping centre in the world. It is the oldest covered shopping centre. Yeah, it's yeah. the Rose. It, so it, um, you can walk around Chester and, and look in shops uh, undercover. Yes. Uh, but they're 12th century uh, shopping precinct, quite different to Chadston, which be. I think is probably 12 hours old. <laughs> That's right. What's the return? But I love Chadston, <laughs> by do. the way. If we're going to talk about Melbourne icons, <laughs> I, I love shopping at Chadston. That, to me, is where you want to go shopping, yep. where you just get everything done. Yep. I don't want to be getting in my car, going from Chapel Street to, to, you know, to, to the CBD, then over down to South Melbourne. I want to get in. That's how men like to shop. Mm. Get in, get my stuff done, and get out. Yep. I don't, No browsing. Yeah. And I like the temperature of a shop to be around about 8 degrees. Degrees centigrade, not the twenty-eight degrees that people think that we all want. Yeah, right. I'm actually dying of hitting a heat stroke. Yeah. You know, trying on a pair of jeans. I want to be in, get my stuff, and gone. Yep, beautiful. And that's why I also like online shopping. <laughs> yeah. Although I never online shop for clothes because I, they're never right. I have to feel them. Yeah, I'm quite tactile. You're not. You're not. You don't. You're not an unusual shape, Jeff. You're, I'm not an unusual you shape. The big beard. You you fit. You're, I know you ride a bike quite a lot, so you're mm. a fit guy. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Uh, well, anyway, so I thought I'd just throw that that, that Chester thing in there because it was a little bit of information that people on this podcast probably didn't know. 
that I that I knew about because I've been to Chester because yeah, my mother's yeah. from Wrexham, which is down the road. And of course, possibly the enemy of the Chester Football Club. Or, it, was. it was. I remember yeah. being in, and, and the only pitched battle I've ever been involved in was was Chester versus Wrexham at, at um, in Sealand Road, which is where Chester used to play. They might even play there now, right. and uh, and that was our derby game, and uh, and so there was always fisticuffs <laughs> a game like that. Yeah. And I'd been about thirteen and was terrified, was chased down an alleyway. Oh wow! Yeah, oh. I thought. I went, I don't think football hooliganism is for me. <laughs> no, right. Oh, the Britain. And so you came over to Australia in... Now, I understand you met your now wife in 99, mm. but you probably, if I understand correctly, you did have, did have a bit of a long-term, a long-distance relationship for a couple of years, didn't you? Uh, well, yes, we did, yeah. So I came to Melbourne, um, in fact, Australia in 96, okay. and... Um, with Joe Brand, we did a tour together. Then I came back in 97. Then I came back in 99. That's when I met Fiona, my wife, at the Melbourne Comedy Festival at the Peter Cook Bar. Mm-hmm. And um, and then we started dating online, which mm. in the 90s, there wasn't much online. Mm. It was mostly emails. Yep. And I had a little Scion organiser, and I used to email mm. her from my Scion. Yep. And uh, she used to email me from a... Um, from a, 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 a an internet room on, yep. you know, in um, uh, in various places, uh, and then so we dated um, for a couple of years, and she would come to see me, and I, and I spent a fortune on on telephone calls and stuff, and then she eventually came to live with me in two thousand and one. So for two years, we were we were seeing each other, you know, at long distance, and it was tough. Yeah, it was imagine. really tough. Um, and, I, and I wasn't seeing anyone else. Once I was, once I committed to her, that was it. Yep. So it was um, a lot of the time was just waiting to catch up. Right. And um, yeah, at, uh, but we persevered. Uh, and then she moved in with me in uh, two thousand and two, long term. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that was in the UK. In the UK, UK. Petherton Road in in Islington. Oh right, mm. there we go. There'll be a plaque out the front of that place soon, won't there? <laughs> Jeff Green lived here, one of those uh, monumentals in the future. When, when you become an interviewer, obviously, mm. yeah. Uh, so you, you were. So I, my understanding for your career was you were in the the height of your comedy career in the UK. Things were going really well for you. You're getting TV spots. You were being on all of the BBC radio and TV the, and, and other channels, other the, mm. the, the uh, private channels. You were everywhere, and then you decided, now bugger that. I'm going to start fresh. I'm going to go to a place called Australia. Obviously, you knew what it. Mm. And start from zero. What was going through your head? Because I, I believe there was a bit of family decisions in that big choice. It wasn't a career decision as such. It wasn't my career decision. Mm. Um, look, there was. it was a complicated time. It was 2008. I was on tour. We had two children. My yep. eldest was three. My youngest was nine months. Um, and... Uh, I was on Celebrity Master Chef, yep. and I was doing all the Never Mind the Buzzcocks yep. and uh, Jonathan Ross's radio shows. Had my own Radio Two uh, series, my third series. Yep. Um, yeah, things were I had a nice, lovely hat, house in Hampstead. Ricky Gervais one side of me, and wow. you know, and um, and uh, Russell Brand the other, yep. and all of that. David Baddiel also was, was part of the part of the scene. And and then my wife's um, dad passed away, right. and she came home, and to Melbourne, and and then and decided that she just could not face returning back to England because yeah. it was tough for her. She didn't really sell, and yeah. and having two little children in London uh, as a as a mum a, a, a long way from home, yeah. we became friends with Tim Minchin and his yeah. wife, yeah. Um, because they were they were they had a baby as yeah. well. So Fiona and Tim's wife became, you know, Aussie uh, wives abroad yep, yep, buddies. Yep. And uh, Simon Munnery's wife, Janet, and there was a lot of, um, you know, she used to call it the Comedy Wives Club that they had. Uh, all these Australian wives that had been brought back to England almost yep. almost as war brides. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, no, Tim's obviously from uh, from uh, yeah. Perth. But anyway, it, was, it, it suited the purposes. Um, but it, she wasn't settled. 
And so I had to support her. Yeah. I had to come and say, yeah, I've got, I'm going to have to do it. I went, yeah, you sod my career. <laughs> yeah. you know, let's, yeah. but, but I was ready. Yeah. I was really, I, I, I was really sensed that my life was boring. Yeah, right. You know, I knew the gigs I was going to get. I knew the money I was going to make. I knew the TV shows I was going to do. And, and, and I'd been on that circuit for a while. It was very lucrative. Yeah. And from the outside, it looked very successful. But it had become mundane. Yeah, right. And so I didn't want to keep doing that I wanted to try something completely different okay. which is a bit like when I started comedy I was in a chemical engineer That's right. and, I, and I had a great job and I had an office and I had a company car and I had a, an expense account and I had a pension and I went I don't, I don't want to do this anymore I want to try something completely different yep. and um, you know and there's, a, there's an expression do what you've always done you'll get what you've always got yep. Yep. And, and I love that expression yep. and, um, and, and, and so I went fuck it I'm just going to go yep. I'm going to and, and I went I didn't even tell my agent mm. my, the last the last TV show mm-hmm. I did in England was Michael McIntyre's Comedy Roadshow That's in, right. um, in so, Belfast. Sorry. And I went, I left my luggage in Heathrow Airport. I went to Belfast. I saw Addison, who's now sadly passed away. And I said, he, he said, oh, you know, my boy was doing this and this. I went, no, no, I'm going. Mm. You know, you're not managing me anymore. Yeah. I've had enough of you and I've had enough of England yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, I, uh, because I just, I need a new challenge. Yeah. And so off, off, I, off I went. Yeah. And I started from scratch, and so I'm, in, yeah. I'm I'm doing gigs in bloody Albury, and I'm doing gigs yeah. in, um, you know, Geelong and 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 uh, and Murray Bridge, yeah, and then in these, Adelaide, yeah, and, and tough gigs, and yes. and wondering what I'm what I'm doing, but I two and two little children that I need to feed, yes. So, but I loved it. I love starting again. Yeah. Really did, and I'm I'm, I'm I, I love new challenges. Yeah, I guess. The, you're lucky that you did that jump around the time that the internet was taking off because there was record of you at your height. So if, you, if anyone Googles you, Thank it's, you. well, yeah, right. I mean, I believe you. I'm looking at you. I, look, I believe you're a success. And yeah, you've got your own radio show. Sure, Jeff. Uh, but then I Google your name and there it is. There's Michael McIntyre. He's, you know, shaking your hand, introducing you, and you're the next stage in an auditorium of a thousand people. Yeah, kind of lucky in that sense. I don't know. I'm just trying to see the, the silver lining. But you, obviously you've already found the silver lining because you're up It's still up. a struggle. I still, I still have to fight, find gigs. I still have to go to work. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm not um, minted. I'm not, I'm not ready to, in, a, in any way, able and ready to retire. Right. You know, so I still have to work. I still have to do, do shows, which probably 20 years ago I'd have been going... Are you sure? But I don't mind it. Yeah. There's something. There's, there's something when you've got when you've got to look after children and yeah. and feed them. You do anything, yeah. Yeah. and really, it takes all of the it takes all of the um, the self importance away from you, and that's very liberating. Mm. And and so I went. No, no, I've got, I've got to go and do that gig. You know, whereas when I was single with, without children, I'd go. Oh, you know, oh my status, my career, and and that's and it's that means nothing. Yeah. So I don't mind. I'll do any, I'll do any gig. I'm a much better comic now, yep. much better than when I was in England. Right. I write better. Um, I, I, I talk about different stuff. I was in yep. a rut. I was yep. talking about, I'd just done, I'd written three books and they were successful. But I was just writing the same joke, I felt, yep. over and over again. Yep. Yep. So I wanted to just ch- you know, have children, move countries, and that just yep. blows your mind Wide open and 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 to to receive other stimulus. Sure. And so I'm, 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 I have my gigs. The gigs are tougher mm. over here. Yeah. You know, I have to work harder. I have to speak quicker. I have to um, have more dense material. Yeah. It has to be stronger. And that's cause that's only a good thing. I just performed in England. Yeah. In um in, in the Chester Comedy Festival and I played the the Chester Town Hall and and it was and in front of these people who were fans. So yeah. it was not a tough gig. No, right. But it was a joy to present something to them, yeah. and I hope that they thought, "Oh, Jeff's not gone to seed. He's not. He's not been put out to pasture. Yeah, right. He's actually still sharp. His material's yeah. still current, and he still thoroughly enjoys performing because I do." Yeah. Any any jokes about the undercover shopping centres or Chadston? <laughs> 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 uh, no, because they know them all. I mean, I, I did go. I, I was having a look, look around, and I would say, oh, "I've I got my itinerary." You know, I wanted to get it, um, and I would name all these shops that that, that I know don't exist anymore, yeah, right. but they were there when I grew up. And of course, to get the recognition. Oh yes, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's been that long since I've been back that Chester changes. Yeah, sure. You know, even though it's two thousand years old, it's still reinventing itself. Yeah, that's no, a beautiful part of the UK. 
Um, you, you, you sort of just talked about your new material. You talk a lot about your family in your stand-up. Mm. Uh, For tax purposes. <laughs> is that right? Okay. So they can take go on tour. Is that right? So, yeah. <laughs> I, just, I could claim them as a business expense. <laughs> That's great. And you also talk, and you're very, uh, well, certainly when I see you in Melbourne, you talk a lot about Melbourne. You talk about the, the 96 tram and you talk about coffee shops. I think there's one for everyone now. That's one of your mm. gags. Mm. Um, so your life is not private anymore. I mean, you put it up on stage. Do you ever find that you, ha, ha, has your wife ever gone, no, don't go there or get yes. run it through her? Or? Yeah, um, she has. Only once. And it was just a crass joke I was telling. And she and she she never actually said you can't do it, but she just went, I'm not comfortable. And in, in, in her way, I mean, Fiona, my wife, is very, you know, strong-willed, mm. as, as, as a lot of Australian women are. Mm-hmm. They're known for being strong-willed, and what's, what's probably why comedians fall for them. Right. You know, because it's nice to have a... I'm not saying, you know, people... They're less strong-willed, but it is a trait in Australian women right, right. that they're, they're outspoken, and, and that's good. Yep, and, yep. I, and I like that, and they're funny, and um, and 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 so I enjoy their company. But and so my wife is not a shrinking violet, yep. and she has, um, and she, but she'll she'll accept pretty much everything I say right. on stage. There's always a kernel of truth in what I'm saying, <laughs> anyway. I mean, that's what makes them. You know, yeah. hit the mark. Yes, but um, but she did. There was only one time, and it and so I I I dropped that routine. Mm-hmm. But yeah, you know, it's part of it's part of being. Um, you know, it goes with the it goes with the territory as yes. a comedian's wife yes. or partner, um, male and female, that you're going to get talked about. Yeah, and uh, and I mean, I used to sort of draw the analogy to to you know. Um, a, a musician writing a song about his oh. girlfriend, as many musicians do. Well, then I will write a routine about my girlfriend, okay. and as a as a homage yes, to yes. our relationship. Yes. Well, there's there's yeah. Well, as long as it's not rap, because they generally derogatory about girlfriends, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> In that sense, um, I have I do write rap jokes. Oh, well, I, well, I I call them raps. Other yeah. people would call them poems. But I uh, <laughs> I'm just trying to. Know, wind back the years, but yeah, I probably could write a, jo- a rap routine about my wife, no problem. Oh, well, mm, there, there you, you go. go. Well, so you're multi talented, um, and you, as, well, rap we haven't heard yet, but we'll I'll keep an ear open for that. You're all, you're also a keynote speaker now. I'm, I want to differentiate from a, a comedian and an MC that that's one type of function that comedians do, but a keynoter, a keynoter, my understanding, the, the world that I come from did involve keynotes, these are the I mean, they do get paid a lot of money, the keynoters. They, they do get to fly business class, whereas a lot of comedians, you know, drive their, themselves there. You do a very good keynote on change. Uh, and it's called, Without Change, There Would Be No Butterflies, A Guide to Embracing Change. Mm. Well, what you just talked about over the last seven, eight minutes, obviously you've gone through a lot of change. What, what is this? What do you cover in this? This is kind of an after-dinner presentation. No doubt you had humour, personal stories. What is it? That particular keynote. So I walk people through the um, the process of going from being a chemical engineer in the UK, mm-hmm. which is where I started, yep. um, to being a um, stand up comedian in Australia, and I, and I and I take them on that you know that journey and and and. And all, I mean, I talk about, you know, the, 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 the things that guide me, do what you've always done, you get what you've always got. Yeah, yeah. And the things that I, the, the reasons why I like change. Mm. Um, I don't hector, and I, and, and I do, as you say, lace it with lots and lots of humour mm. um, about Australia, observations about being a chemical engineer, you know, all of the, all of the, 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 the elements. And then I talk about, um, uh, you know, people saying, I couldn't do what you did. You know, I couldn't change. And I'm like, life is change. Mm. If we didn't have change, you know, uh, Elton John would still be Reg Dwight. You know, <laughs> yeah, the, right. the, the internet would still be notes tied around pigeons' legs. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. people would say, oh, did, did you get me email? And, oh, no, it didn't get past my firewall. What's that? That's the name of me cat. <laughs> right. So, you know, so I, so yeah. I, put, I put in as many jokes as I can. Uh, and then I, um, and I talk about... 
the, 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 what what it's what change has given me. Mm. You know what um, what I would have what I wouldn't have achieved and what I wouldn't have experienced if I hadn't uh, you know mm. embraced change. And and so that's uh, and and it's and it's it's an enjoy. I don't do it enough, but it's an enjoyable experience. And um, and it can enliven a, a dusty old conference mm. because I put a lot of energy into it, and yep. there's a lot of belly laughs. And yep. and hopefully it will. If it look, if it just allows one person to think, I'm 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 not prepared to to put up with the status quo. Yeah. And um, because it's just there's just so much more. You shouldn't be frightened of it. No. There's so much more out there. And um, and uh, you know and and so that's yeah that that's basically it. Yeah. And 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 in, in all honesty, one of the things about being a comedian in Australia, as you know, there's 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 not many gigs. Mm. You know, when I was in the UK, I would do five gigs a night. Wow. You know, uh, I could start at eight o'clock at the comedy store, yeah. and then I would go to do um, t- at, at the two 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 gigs at the Banana, and, and then I'd do another one down at. Um, uh, the Covent Garden then I would finish at the comedy store at 2 o'clock in the morning wow. okay. so that's 5 I mean that's quite quite rare but, it, but yeah. comedians used to do it regularly yeah. um, and whereas now I might do 5 gigs a month yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so I have to um, I, you, you have to be a little bit more flexible mm. and, that, and that's no bad thing yeah. as a performer so I am um, so a keynote is another way yeah. of, of of using my skills to um, you know to, to to pay the bills. Yeah, absolutely. And a keynote's obviously uh, targeting the B two B business, business to business. You know, and, and they have deeper pockets as well. So, it, in terms of the comedians that are listening to this, perhaps more the established comedians that do listen to this, because your name's on the on the podcast. That would that be an area that you could recommend people go to if they've been doing comedy for a bit. Always. Well, no, I'm not going to recommend it because I don't want the competition. <laughs> yes. But uh, but I started out, I, I wanted a keynote about that. So I wrote my Melbourne International Comedy Festival show yep. in 2015 uh, called uh, Leaping from the Bell Curve. And mm-hmm. I basically road tested all the elements of yep. that story yep. Yep. in front of a Melbourne Comedy Festival crowd. Mm-hmm. And then I condensed it down to 40 minutes. So I made it bulletproof yeah, right. with a festival audience. Oh, so I would recommend if you want to do that, I wouldn't just leap into it yeah. I would uh, I would use all the, the festival opportunities that are open to us as performers in Australia yeah. get it get it get it down get uh, get it off pat and then and then and then take it to market yeah oh, that's a great idea that's great um <clears throat> now if I go way back so we're, we're out of chrono- chronological order here but if we go way way back you started comedy with Eddie Izzard, mm. I believe. Is that right? Absolutely. And Jackson's Lane Cabaret Workshop. Yes. Is that... Are you smiling? So it's a positive memory. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the defining memory of my career. Right. So um, I'd wanted to go to uh, get into comedy. I'd been to the Comedy Store in 1987 yeah. and I'd seen these comedians. My friend asked me to go down there. My friend Nazir Afsal, who's... Um, Nazir Afsal, now OBE, who was mm. one of the UK's main uh, Crown prosecutors. But I was at university with him. Yeah. Yeah. And we were good mates. And I was in my 20s and I'd been dumped by a girl and he went Jeff come on I'll cheer you up we'll go to the comedy store it's the big thing yeah. you know it was the mecca in those days yeah. of stand up comedy you know uh, Stephen Fry would be there Ben yeah. Elton um, the young ones um, at the Alexis Sale they'd yeah. all uh, uh, and 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 the uh, Kim Kenny used to look after it so I went down there saw these comedians and um, uh, and then I went oh this is what I want to do I don't want to be an engineer yeah. uh, but I didn't really, really think I could make the leap from from an engineer straight to open spot. People do. Yeah. Anyway, Naz um, said to me, Jeff, I've seen this thing in Time Out, Ca- Jackson's Lane Cabaret Workshop for budding comedians and cabaret performers to ju- to learn about the comedy circuit. Yeah, right. And it's five pounds. It's on a Tuesday night. Why yeah. don't you go down there? Yeah. And I remember so clearly, even though it's thirty years ago, yeah. uh, I'm going. And he sent me the little thing, and I went, Yes, maybe that's that's maybe. Maybe that's the, the the baby step I need mm. before the big. So I went down there and, and I sat next to Eddie, yep. and he was sat there. You know what? We the guy called Bob Boyton yep. uh, presented to us. It was just a, an established comedian would teach you about the scene, not dissimilar to what you're bringing to the Melbourne comedy scene with the School of Hard Knock Knocks. Yep. Um, so established comic that would talk to you about comedy or cabaret as it was known in those days. Oh. Um, 
and and Eddie had this big long blue coat on, yeah. and uh, and had a terrible uh, reputation. Everyone thought, now he's not going to go anywhere. He's just <laughs> too weird. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> but we became good friends. And I remember coming on the tube back with him on the tube, and um, him eating an apple and telling me that he went to Sheffield University because it was because his. He'd only been at uni two years earlier. Sheffield's a bit of a rough area, isn't it? Sheffield Uni, he'd done economics, I think. Right. No, no, was, that was a well-known oh, student. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well-known uni, well yeah. well thought of uni. Okay. And I went to Birmingham Uni and um, and we just chatted about it and then we said goodbye. And then we saw him again, the f- we saw each other the following um, week and the following week. And then we just became good friends. In yeah, fact, right. if, it's one of his early documentaries. I think I'm the only comedian in it. If okay. you check it out, yep, yep. if you go on IMDb and see, uh, I think I get a mention on one of his. I've never, I've never bothered to find it because I'm not self obsessed. <laughs> but maybe you want to. There's a, there's a for anyone listening to this. There you go. There's your challenge. <laughs> we had dinner. We because um, one of the joys of being in Melbourne is, although I don't get to see all my friends every week like I used to, mm-hmm. they 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 still blow through. Yes. Right. So you know, so Bill Bailey's coming in November, and I yeah. will catch up with him. We'll go bird watching or yeah, yeah. something. Um, uh, Eddie comes every now and again. In fact, last name dropping. Last time I saw Eddie, we were we were having dinner. Yeah. Uh, Outside, in um, opposite the comedy theatre, there was Eddie, Trevor Noah, uh, Tom Gleason, Pete Hellier, um, Rove McManus, me, and a couple of others, and Adrian Bohm, the lovely Adrian Bohm, who's a promoter, yep, yep. Um, and and Seb Bohm, his son, and we and we, and we all sat and um, discussed uh, Obama. <laughs> there you go. Mm. Well, if, if you wanted to jump up the hierarchy of comedy, you just bomb that room. Not it was out. Yeah, it was about that bomb that restaurant. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, you know that's it. You know, it's it, it, it. We sound like name droppers, but you know mm. they are they are they are they, your contemporaries. Yes, and you all tend to mix with the people that you started out with. True. So I see like people like Carl Chandler and Tommy Dasselo yeah. and and um, you know uh, uh, and and that. That crowd yes. will all they all stick together. We, they True. they yeah. cross pollinate and they come and say hello. But you know, but I'm 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 be with the Andrew Goodwin and the yep. Tim Smith, and yes. I'd be that that be my crowd. Yes. And your 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 little group that you start out with, and it's great yeah. that they you know that becomes your little group. And the, um, the little you know, and, and yeah, Joel Creasy has the you know Be- Becky Lucas and yep. uh, you know so so they all yeah I love it and uh, and, and Mel Bottle that's uh, that's it we've all got our own little um, our own little ghettos <laughs> yeah right well, how, do, how does Khalid Calafella get into this then because he's managed by Mushroom Comedy yep uh, you know I believe you actually helped him directly with his career particularly in acting because I know he he did a whole bunch of uh, spots uh, acting opportunities came up he wasn't mm. so interested you gave him a little bit of prep and then he got a big gig uh, in a TV show, he's didn't he? He's a great actor. Yeah, 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 he's great. And he's a great talent. And um, and I, 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 what I love is I love talent. You know, I love being around talent. Yeah. And, uh, and, 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 and so that's what draws me to, to the business. And I miss talent. I miss talent being, being around it on a daily basis. But when I see it, people like him and people like... Joel Creasy and people like Alex Williamson and yep. you know they you can smell the talent on them they're mm-hmm. great they're mm-hmm. great comics yep. and they're um, and they've got the chops and stuff and um, I mean there's a whole long line Alice Fraser yep. you know there's um, so so Khaled is somebody I go and I, I just I got drawn to, to to him and his career mm-hmm. and I've enjoyed watching it and there was a time I had an opportunity to to help him yep. um, apply himself to to that role that he got in Ali's wedding. Yes. Well, we just we we went through the scripts together, and he and he and he got ready, got helped him get ready for his audition, yeah. which he which he sailed through. Yeah, right. So um, it's 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 about working with people with potential. That you know, it's not it's not just comedy. You know, you see that in 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 um, in sport. Yeah. You know, you can just see the talented people. There's something yeah. wonderfully attractive about effortlessly talented people. And, and on that note, aside from comedy. What about attitudes and other skill sets that are important for a long career in comedy? What do you look for in a in a Carly Calafella type of 
comedian, obviously it's funny. Work ethic. Work ethic, yeah. It's all that, you know. I mean, I, um, I've i questioned my own work ethic. You might think, oh, you, Jeff, you've written three books and you've got five DVDs and, you know, and you write a new show. God, you work hard. And I go, I don't work hard enough. Mm-hmm. There's still people working harder than me. Right. And it really... Work ethic meet, meets talent yep. equals and look equals yep. success. Yep. Yep. Um, and if they haven't got the work ethic, the talent means nothing. Yep. Yep. So that's really it. It's yep. you know, just are they prepared to apply themselves? Look, they'll go off the rails. You know, people when they become super successful, most people become a wanker. Yes. For six months. Yes. For, and I've seen it so many times. I've seen hundreds of my friends become. Yeah. Uh, telly famous yeah, right. and and they become our souls and you just have to wait for the, and some come back mm. and some don't but you know um sadly some don't right. but um but most most of them come back oh yes yeah too. i thought i was i thought i was it yeah. i thought my career trajectory was just gonna we're just gonna keep going at, at you know at, at 78 degrees yeah. you know to to into the ionosphere you go no it doesn't it doesn't. Careers do that. Up, they yeah. they sine yeah. wave, yeah. Um, and that's. Uh, but that's fine. They do come back. So, uh, but they've got to stay. You know. So you you accept people's. You know. Uh, human weaknesses, yeah. like they become a bit of a dick, yeah. um, or they might, you know, get into partying, yeah. or they might, um, you know, they might start to become arrogant and lazy. Yeah. But you know, most of them come back to, to get back to knuckling down. So you know, that's that, that's it. The, so there is a longer view because the thing with comedy is, yeah. it's not like um, you know we're surrounded by pop pop artists and you know if you're a, and they have two or three year careers yeah. you know comedians have 40 and 50 and 60 year careers yeah. Yeah. so um so they've and they they you sort of try and impart that to them yeah. so the young people go pace yourself you know yeah. this you um you know you, you're going to be in this business a long time yeah so it's not a it's not a rush yeah. you know um you can afford to take your time. Uh, so just keep turning your material over. Yep. Keep finding your voice. I mean, that's the thing, finding who you are. And the only way to find who you are is by trying your material over and turning it over, over and over. Yep. You, know, you might think, oh, my five minutes. Yeah, this is me. This is who I am now. I've got my five minutes. And then three months later, you go, fuck, this material feels old. Yeah, right. and, and I'm so much better because that's what happens when you're starting out. Your persona gets better. Your material has to keep catching up. Yep. And it keeps happening. But you can only do that if you're throwing your material out. True, true. Mm. And I guess with you, you've got the extra challenge in that if you're getting gala gigs on ABC, people is, people everywhere in the world can see your jokes. So the next year comes around, you, yeah, you do have to write a new set, don't you? Whereas yeah. someone who doesn't have that, that TV appearance can... Well, I'm talking about uh, Chris Franklin in particular. You know, he's a fantastic comedian, but he's been... I think he's got a couple... Well, quite a few jokes that he wrote back in the, the 80s, you know, that he rolls out because his audience changes all the time. They were written on papyrus. <laughs> they were. I hope he's not listening to this because... Uh, I'm doing a gig with him. Are you uh, right? Yeah, soon. <laughs> I just uh, I just put it up on Facebook. So I'm... I'm, I'm I called him Evergreen. You're and, right. And, uh, mm. and he is. And his jokes are classic. And he's, his performance is a classic performance. Performance, yes. and you know it'll be tough following him because he, you know, he's he's as when you've been doing a, a show, um, or you, when, when you've been a, a performer for as long as Chris and I have been, yeah. you're usually pretty, you know, you're nailing it. Yeah. So um, yeah, and, and it's always good for me to work with headliners, yeah. fellow headliners, because it stops me being complacent. Yes. And um, and that's what that's what happens in the UK. That's why comedians in the UK get good. Is because you're on with four headliners, yeah. and usually if you're on at the end, which I always was, and I got fed up with being on at the end because I'm, I had ch- young children, yeah. and 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 I was usually been up since five a.m. the f- previous morning, and uh, and and everyone's just doing their greatest hits, yeah. and then you've got to top it. Yeah, right. So it you know it really leaves you no room to right. um, to rest on your laurels. Well, oh, that reminded me the last time uh, I saw you with. Chris Franklin. It was actually for the School of Hard Not Knocks. We actually had That's you. Right. We had you as the headliner for the end of the night. A nine. It would have been a nine forty-five kickoff, which is late these days. Obviously, not <laughs> way back when you were doing one AM shows. Uh, and then you did the middle bracket instead. And I thought, well, there's a man who's very. Uh, he's, he's very uh, logical. 
because uh, you, you said you have kids mm. and humility. You know, you, you weren't like, oh, I'm going to be the last guy. You know, yeah. that's great. No, no, no. Well, Chris, Chris has got kids. He's good. Now got grandkids, yes, but they're yes. not getting him up. He ain't got to take him to school anymore. He and doesn't. I have, and as you have. Tassie, I think, aren't they? Or somewhere <laughs> else. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But that was good of him. He because he, he's a troop, and he went, yeah, I'll do it for you. And that yeah. was that was great. Yeah, yeah. I'll take the headline spot with all the glory. Yeah, I'll do that for you, mate. <laughs> well, um, you've got some coming shows. It just... means nothing. That's the thing. That's what you realise yeah. when you've been doing it a while. Yeah. You know what you know what things which what what things matter and what don't. Yeah, right. And so uh, I can be very. I'm just a lot more relaxed. My wife says I'm a completely different person than when she first met me. Oh. I was, uh, and and I can I get it. I think I was just up my own ass mm. and um and and stressed yeah. and unhappy. Yeah, right. Really. Uh, I'm a much happier, more relaxed person now. So if I ask her, she'll say I changed him. Yeah. Well, <laughs> indirectly. Yeah. It, because because um, I'm here, and uh, and it's not quite so cutthroat. And, and and also the great thing about being here is I don't have to turn the TV on and see all of my friends on television oh. and getting all that bile, yeah. which 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 you know in my stomach. Going, that joke. How did he go? No, <laughs> she's getting that work. Oh, I'm not. Yeah. And, you know, it's so competitive in the UK. I, and now because t- there's very little TV. Uh, opportunities, you know, you might see Dave, Dave Hughes, mm. who's, who's basically on everything, yes, yes, yes. and uh, and then yeah. nobody else gets anything. So yeah. you sort of once you get once you once you make your peace with Dave Hughes receiving all the work, <laughs> then right. everything else is fine. The king is dead. Long live the king. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, hopefully we do see with Channel 10's pilot week and Dave uh, Dave O'Neill back on. That our, was brilliant. I yeah. thought I thought Dave O'Neill's stuff was great. Yeah. Wonderful supporting cast too. Mm. Thought Dave Thornton was a great actor. Yeah, he really was. loved it. He yeah, was. yeah, I really. And um, uh, uh, was, um, who else was in it? Um, what's her name? Geraldine, was Geraldine, Geraldine yeah, was that's in right. She was yeah, was, yeah, 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 she was. Yeah, they were all brilliant. Loved them all. When I first went to live comedy, I could not believe that I, this that I hadn't experienced this before. Yeah, you know, yeah. I'd seen a Richard Pryor um, DVD on on Channel Four yeah. at two in the morning, and then I went to a live event where I just laughed so much, and I went, "Oh, this is." There's something beautiful about live comedy. That's right. Yeah. And, it's, and something still beautiful. I mean, I, I, I still go. I, I came from being a, com, a comedy fan. Mm. And, and I, you know, so I still go and watch Bill Bailey. I still go and watch, um, you know, uh, the Khaled Calafala yeah. and, and Kieran Lyons and, and, um, and Amos Gill yeah. and, and, and all of those people as, as much as I can because I love watching comedians and Tom, Tom Gleason. Um, yeah, it's um, once you've been to a, a live comedy event, you know the internet stuff is is just a you know, it's like um, it's like full sex and masturbating. <laughs> Very good. I'll make sure that's in the show notes. <laughs> Very good. Well, talking about seeing comedians, where can we go? You mentioned you're doing a show with Chris Franklin. Where? When's your next gig? How can people see you live? I'm doing a gig in... Um, oh, you, you, you'll have to find out on my Facebook page because I don't keep them all in my head. Yeah, no. So uh, go to my Facebook page and you'll see some live events. Very good. Jeff Green... Uh, it's a page, I assume. It's a yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So page. Mm. absolutely, yeah. So it's uh, it's Facebook forward slash comedian Jeff Green, oh. as opposed to the basketballer Jeff Green, who's yeah. a six foot nine black American who people still mistake me for him on yeah. on Facebook. Yeah, there they go. say good luck for the new season. <laughs> I'm thinking, what 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 is what is saying that this is an an elite black athlete? <laughs> no, I don't know where to go with that. Um, uh, good, and if someone wants to book you, so uh, if someone's thinking, ah, oh, either for a keynote speech, uh, talking about change, or for a comedy show, or you know, get mushroomcomedy.com, uh, you'll find my my um, my little thumbnail. Click on that, and then you'll find a um, you'll find a uh, contact there. Good. So yeah, yeah, management at mushroomcomedy.com. Excellent, excellent. So the. The days are gone that you that uh, you manage yourself. You've now got this huge organisation that's backing you. Uh, but uh, but I assume you're very approachable. You're not. Scott. I'm available. Yeah. If that's what you're saying. <laughs> that's what I'm yes. saying. Yes. Date's still available. Don't, yeah. Don't be, don't be afraid of. <laughs> no, oh, he won't. Be I will and... reply to your emails. <laughs> excellent. excellent. And, immediately. Desperately. Immediately. And you and you do all kinds of weird shows. I just finished uh, the, Thank the, you. the last time weird shows, meaning that the keynotes. Uh, you did you did a uh, presentation at an artificial intelligence 
a facial recognition conference. That's mm. the last big one I know of that you did. Yeah, uh, yeah. I look, I'm I'm not proud. <laughs> I'll, uh, I've got, got have jokes will travel. <laughs> Very good. Well, I mean that's my other p- part of my life. But uh, I've always said to my son, I said. Artificial intelligence is going to take a lot of jobs, the accounting, the law jobs, possibly even doctors. But the one thing it won't take is it won't take people's humour. I think stand-up comedy is there forever. Good. Thank you. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I find that very very uh, uh, relieving. Um, but it might. That might be the benchmark. You know, when you can be... Um, when you when you can be fooled by a AI comedian, yes, that's when um, that's when they've got you. That's right. That's when we take the next to the ray guns and the, uh, <laughs> the arms in the air. <laughs> that's it. The well, life is over. Well, Jeff Green, thank Thanks. you very much for yeah, your time. Yeah. It's yeah. been wonderful to grab you. You're a very busy man. No worries. I look forward to seeing you as an audience member soon. Thanks. Thanks.